Hi, and welcome back to the Lifestyle Show with me, Pam Joseph, broadcasting here at the Tabernacle in West London. Um, now, before the break, I said we're getting a bit serious now. And uh, this particular issue that we're going to be discussing affects a lot of us in the community, particularly in the North West London um, area. It's um, Bridge Park. And as soon as I say that, many of you say, yeah, I know Bridge Park, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. Um, it's about to be taken, really. Um, but here to tell you all about that is Jay Maston. He's a part of the campaign group, and it's, you know, Save Bridge Park. L let's go from the beginning on this. And those who do not know about Bridge Park and what it's all about, let's talk about the birth. Oh, hello, Pam, and thank you very much for having us. Um, we have a situation here in London where we've got an important building. This building is worth upwards of £50 million, pounds and it actually belongs to us, the community. And a lot of people don't realise that we have high-value property that we own as a community, and that's for the, built for the people. It was originally um, founded by a group of young people on an average age of 21, and it was a small cooperative called the HPCC, the Harlesden People's Community Cooperative. And it was led by a, a young man called Leonard Johnson who chaired it and a number of other individuals. And these lads um, wanted to regenerate the Stonebridge community within the Brent area. And they got together and they saw a used bus garage which was up for sale. And they walked past it and they said, we've got a vision that we want to own that bus garage and we want to build and regenerate our community. And in an amazing way, they worked with... Um, Brent Council heard about the vision that they had and Brent Council said we're going to work with you to see if we can raise the money um, at that time there was a lot of riots because this is about 1981 1982 and there was a lot of problems, riots happening across the UK and in particular uh, Brent as we know has got a quite a high black population and the particular Stonebridge area is about Stonebridge and that Brent area of Brent St. Raffles is about 80% black and at that particular time they were trying to figure out how to deal with and uh, work with the community because of this huge uprising that was going on and so Brent thought it was an amazing idea that these guys had a vision to regenerate the community and the young people of that community are building a, a sports complex and community centre and industrial centre and Brent applied with um, the Stonebridge community, with, with the, the Haldson People's Community Centre, HPCC, and in particular, Lena Johnson. They applied to the central government for grants. And this is the Urban Programme grant. And they managed to amazingly raise over £5 million. That's £1.8 million to buy the centre and another three and a plus million pounds to develop the centre. And they developed 37 business units, two restaurants, uh, industry standard gym, yes. a quite a large complex. It was three and a half acres of amazing land. Yes. What they didn't have, because they were a cooperative, they had to work with Brent on it. And Brent worked with them to raise the money and um, wrote the applications on their behalf or with them. They, they, the applications were done in the name of HPCC, but Brent led it. And what we have today is a big problem because of that, because Brent has seen that opportunity and they've decided that they're going to try to take that building and sell it, all that belongs to us, the community. And today what we have is this situation. So we bought the building in 1982 and in 2013 Brent made an attempt to undermine a special covenant that we the people had, the GLC the Department of Environment and Brent got together to raise um, the grant funds in HPCC's name yes. and the GLC noticed that the people will need protecting and they got Brent to commit to a covenant that will protect it for the use of the community and for the people and that it should never be sold. Brent in 2013 worked with the London Borough of Bromley to undermine that covenant so they can sell that building. Outrageous. And um, the building that they're trying to sell, Beanbridge Park, mm -hmm. it sits next to a massive building called the Unisys building, which is just on the heart of the North yes. Circular Road and crosses the Harrow Road. Yes. 
and that building has been empty for about 20 years, that That's Unisys it. Oh, building. Yes, it has, yes. And that, oh, that building itself, um, the owners of that building are a company called General Mediterranean Holdings, and they're, uh, the owner of G GMH is about the eighth richest person in the world, so it's, it, it, they're, they're quite financially well-backed, a foreign entity, and they've got together with Brent to decide that they're going to sell the land, Brent will sell the land to them, and they will build on it and uh, uh, an open market series of buildings. That's about 600 flats right. and uh, a, a, an office block and a hotel. Yes. And we, the people, will only get a small the part small of that land to give us a swimming pool. Tell me how much is it worth now, because you said 82, 81, 82, yeah. and it was worth X amount of millions. Now, how much is that land worth? It was bought for 1.8 million. Yes. Another series of development went on there for about three and a half to five million pounds was dipped to develop the buildings. And today, that land is worth upwards of £50 million. Pounds. And Brent is trying to sell it to General Mediterranean Holdings, Gen Gen General Mediterranean Holdings at £12 million. Pounds. It's a steal. It's an absolute tragedy that they're trying to sell our land. And they're trying to give us a swimming pool and a gym in, repl in return of our three and a half acres of land. So we really need the people to understand we own that as a community. We need to regenerate our community. And we are here to fight. We're here to ask the people to look carefully at what we have to keep our legacy in the hands of our community in perpetuity. We want that land to stay in the hands of the community because we have a plan for what we want to do with the land. Mm -hmm. Instead of Brent, um, uh, Brent selling it to GMH to build open market flats, which they're, they're building 600 flats and they're only going to give us 30 of that, 5%. It's just a tragedy. Um, we've tried to negotiate with Brent, they will not speak to us. We've tried to look at them and we've tried to invite them to come in and share with us because we have an idea, we have a plan, a development for that land. They wouldn't listen. And so in August 2017, Brent announced that they were going to push ahead and sell the land between June 2017 to August to General Mediterranean Holdings. So we got together, a group of us called Bridge Park Community Council, a steering group, we decided we would fight Brent. Um, gonna, you're going to court. I, I, you're going to court. Have we got a date for the court? Yes, we, we haven't got a court date yet, mm. but we have blocked the sale because we put in an application to restrict. And that application is, in effect, blocked, has blocked the sale. Brent refused to talk to us, and they threatened, unless we withdraw the application blocking their sale of the land, that they will take us to court. And we insisted that land is not sold, even though Brent entered into what we would call commonly an exchange of contract. But in legal terms, it's a conditional sale. And Brent entered a conditional sale with General, General Medi Mediterranean Holdings. And we decided we would block that because it belongs to the community. And the land registry, having heard our argument, decided that we've got a worthy application. So we have now blocked the sale. And we're going to take this matter to court and we want the community to work with us to build it. We need, it's a big case. Yes, I was going to come to, I'm going to say this, Jay, there's a lot of money you need, right? So, but let's be honest about it. You do need to ask our people directly that this is what you need. How much do you, uh, what's your target figure and how can they um, give out their funds? Thank you. Our target figure is going to go in two parts because we're hoping that we'll be able to do our initial case with the, the senior council for £25,000. So that's our initial target. That will get us up to the first point where we can actually credibly defend our case. If Brent toughs it out, we'll need up nearly £100,000 because they, they've taken us to the High Court. But with £25,000, we can state our case and stop and fight our position. So that's our first marker. And we would like the community to support. It's not very much money. It sounds like a lot. But with the sort of community that we've got and for what we're trying to save, which is a £50 million legacy, it's a, a, a small amount. There must be some individuals out there that understand our cause. We, Bridge Park has done a number of things over the years. It, it, it was instrumental in the MOBO Awards. Um, some big things has happened at Bridge Park. And what we would like is anybody who's got any affiliation with the area 
to help us to raise that fund. Anybody who can consider that Bridge Park is a part of our legacy and we want to raise it, we've got ideas to build out of the community. We want to put a centre of excellence with 300 flats. We want to put the largest uh, Caribbean, Afro-Caribbean supermarket on that site. It's going to be a small Canary Wharf. It's an educational centre, a social centre and a commercial centre all in one. We will um, buy and sell our own gas and water. We'll buy it as a buying group. We will put together ideas on that site. It will be a technology centre of excellence.